And Israel has ordered a complete siege of the Gaza Strip. The defense minister says that the Palestinian enclave will receive no electricity, food, water or gas. All through the day, Israeli troops have been massing near the border. They number around 100,000. There have also been reports of sirens going off in Tel Aviv and explosions in Jerusalem. And for some insight into the Middle East situation, we have with us Armin Seikel, who joins us live now. He is Emeritus Professor of Middle Eastern and Central Asian Studies at Australia National University, as well as a distinguished visiting fellow at the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies. Professor Seikel, thank you for joining us this evening. There have been very strong reactions from governments <laughs> across Asia over this attack. Uh, even from India, which has had a very nuanced Middle Eastern policy approach, Narendra Modi coming out very strong, uh, talking about his support uh, for Israel. Mostly condemnation, though, for what has transpired in this attack. Well, I think all acts of violence and um, uh, loss of innocent lives must be really condemned. Uh, I mean, at the moment, uh, Israel is receiving a lot of support from the United States and also from many other allies. And know that also Prime Minister Moody has come out and uh, supported Israel. And we, and we know that there's been very close relationship between New Delhi and Jerusalem that has developed over the years. But at the same time, this crisis has come about because uh, of uh, Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories. It's now something like for 56 years, and of course, of course also the blockade of Gaza for, uh, since 2007. Uh, the situation in Gaza has been very desperate for many years. I mean, the lot of the economy is extremely weak. There's a very high unemployment. And also there has been an absence of peace talks, which has been, in other words, it hasn't really left much hope, particularly for the young generation of Gazans. And I think all these things have come really together to uh, basically create a situation where Hamas has decided to take the initiatives, and of course, for that matter, as has been often said by many people, unprecedented actions against uh, Israel. Uh, but, but of course, Halo, uh, Hamas may have also anticipated that there is going to be very massive retaliation. And of course, that's where we are at the moment. Professor uh, Seikel, it has been a desperate situation for decades now, but amid that chorus of condemnation, condemnation. We've also seen other reaction here in Asia. Malaysia's prime minister has slammed what he calls one-sided international actions regarding uh, the oppression of the Palestinian people. Indonesia as well saying that we need to get uh, to the root of the conflict in order to resolve this. How divided are countries in this region, in the Asia Pacific, on the issue of Palestinian statehood? Well, I mean, they are very divided. And of course, uh, uh, Indonesia is a Muslim majority state and Malaysia is a Muslim majority state. And of course, they've had a lot of sympathy for the Palestinians under Israeli occupation uh, for so many years. And uh, the Muslim world, and of course, the international community uh, repeatedly has asked Israel to halt uh, expansion of uh, settlements in the West Bank, to stop creating facts on the grounds, uh, try to enter negotiations for a final settlement. Uh, the Palestinian Authority which is in, uh, supposed to be in control of the West Bank, uh, he recognized the state of Israel some 30 years ago. And there was a lot of hope at that time. And we know that there is a, uh, the Oslo Peace Agreement, which was signed and everything else. But of course, Israel continued to ignore the international demand and the international law, continued to expand its settlements and to, to uh, engage in processes which amounted to repression of the Palestinian people. And, uh, uh, and and of course, that blockade of Gaza. And I think uh, that has really uh, created uh, a, a situation that now we are uh, co confronting, which is uh, very dangerous and could really result in a much wider uh, conflict. Professor Seikel, caught amid all of this are the hostages who have been taken. I mean, the immediate concern for those people, more than 100 of them, they include some individuals from Asia as well, from Thailand. We, we also know that, that some people have died uh, from Asia. 
Cambodian workers, some Thai workers too. How is Hamas likely to leverage on the capture of these people in the days to come? Well, I think Hamas is likely to use them for two purposes. One is at, uh, uh, straight away in order to deter uh, Israeli uh, ground attack, um, because Israel also would be very concerned about its own citizens uh, who are in the detention or, or as hostage uh, taken by the uh, Hamas. Uh, and and uh, I think once the, probably the dust has settled down and there is a bit of stability in the region, uh, um, uh, the Hamas would be negotiating the release of these um, hostages uh, and return for thousands of Palestinians who are um, uh, in uh, Israeli presence. Uh, but that is uh, likely to be down uh, the line, uh, not something very immediate. But at the same time, uh, Israel considered it its priority to secure the release of those hostages. And we, and we know that uh, uh, there has been a report today that, that four of those hostages, include, uh, uh, along with the, uh, the hostage taker, uh, were killed in Israeli bombardment uh, today. Uh, and I think that's a very tragic development. And therefore, I think Israel will have to be very careful to uh, not to engage in a type of actions which could really jeopardize the lives of these hostages. Some of the immediate concern for their safety certainly present. Professor Seichel, I want to thank you for your analysis. That was Amin Seichel, Emeritus Professor of Middle Eastern and Central Asian Studies at Australia National University, as well as a Distinguished Visiting Fellow at RSIS. Israeli and Palestinian supporters are holding opposing rallies across the world as the fighting rages between Israel's military and the Hamas militant group. More than a thousand pro-Palestinian activists have marched through Sydney, demanding Australia cut ties with Israel. The attendees walked to the Sydney Opera House, where the landmark had been lit up in blue and white in support of Israel. Police maintained a heavy presence in the area. Demonstrators held lit flares and threw some at the stairs in front of the Sydney Opera House. Residents in Moscow have laid flowers outside the Israeli embassy, the makeshift memorial set up to remember the victims of the deadly attacks. I mean, while European countries are ramping up security measures around Jewish communities, police protection around synagogues and Jewish schools has also increased. Governments are worried about an increase in anti-Semitic acts as the conflict between Israel and Hamas unfolds. A number of rallies from both sides of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict have been held in many parts of the United States. In Los Angeles, a local Jewish federation organized a vigil for the victims of Saturday's Hamas attack. Demonstrators gathered in San Francisco to voice their support for Palestinians. The rally took place outside the Israeli consulate in the city.